Microcasting for your city. Talkopolis. It is Thursday, August 30th. Welcome to Music Business Daily here at Talkopolis. I am your host, Kelsey Manning. We have so many things we can talk about today. We can talk about Elvis's underwear. We can talk about the new Saturday Night Live lineup. We can talk about Randy Travis. But, you know, I think when we say things like Elvis's underwear, we have to start with that because nothing's going to top that. So might as well get the ball rolling. It's a little dicey, but according to Rolling Stone, Elvis's underwear is going up for auction. So, you know, I think it's a good gift. Maybe there's probably people out there that would want this. Mom, I'm not going to get this for you. Um, I don't think you want it, but I know that you're watching. And so, you know, just ruling it out. But Elvis's briefs that were worn in 1977, they presume could fetch about $15,000 at auction, probably going to go for more. It comes complete with stains. So, you know, it's just a road I don't want to go down, but somebody somewhere is going to be really happy about this. There's also going to be Elvis's personal Bible, which was given to him in 1957. It has handwritten notes. And apparently there's some 16 millimeter home movie footage taken by Priscilla Presley. So, you know, that could be probably targeted at someone, but they're going to go um, up to auction in Manchester, England next month. So buy your plane tickets now and get ready to buy something really personal, special, you decide. Why don't you let us know? Tweet us t- at, at Talkopolis and just, you know, help me clear this up, whether this is a good idea, whether this is a bad idea, whether you're bidding. I want to know. But moving on from that, if you can at all, um, The Simpsons is a show, obviously, that's been on the air for a long time. They always feature a different musical guest, um, just appearing, you know, Simpsonized. And so the Decemberists, if you can actually look via Pitchfork, um, are going to be on The Simpsons. They're um, a bigger kind of multi-instrument piece band. So this is what they're going to look like. They're going to appear in the same episode as Tom Waits, which I think that's kind of interesting because I never really thought of Tom Waits as a voiceover artist because... I mean, I never really wanted to hear the sound of rocks being dragged in someone's throat on like a cartoon, but there, you know, again, is an audience for everything. We're not judging The Simpsons by putting this in. It'll probably be really legendary, but December is Tom Waits. Um, Apparently they're going to be on a December 2nd episode titled The Day the Earth Stood Cool. So I think that has a lot of potential. So, you know, tell your friends that are cooler than you that love both The Simpsons and, you know, smaller indie bands to go for it. Um, But yeah, so they're going to appear on The Simpsons, which is really exciting. Um, And moving on, John Rich and Clay Aiken. Let's just take a moment here. This personally to me just sounds like a sitcom setup that we're taking Clay Aiken, you know, of American Idol, John Rich of Big and Rich, Save a Horse, Ride a Cowboy. They engaged in a Twitter feud. I mean, this is just elementary stuff, guys. This is just weak. But according to the boot, uh, you know, their rivals, former Celebrity Apprentice rivals, so I guess they have that going for them. They, uh, they basically were on Twitter and, and getting mad at each other about the Republican National Convention. And apparently there was racism. And apparently there was all this stuff, which I just really feel like, guys, come on. It's Twitter. Twitter is a place to post adorable pictures of baby cats and puppies. Twitter is a place to share links with people that you like. You know, Twitter should be a happy place. I mean, let's not bring it down. Um, but again, John Rich, Clay Aiken, honestly... You know, I think they're going to tour together next year because that's a really wide demographic. Today's show is all about demographics, really wide demographics. Um, But anyway, if you want to get their commentary, you can feel free to log on to, you know, Twitter. You could tweet at us at Talkopolis. Um, But you could also, you know, check out John Rich and Clay. And I'm sure they're going to be, you know, mad about it for a while. Mm. Mm. Twitter really. Um, But speaking of digital things like Twitter, the global digital music industry is going to witness a 15% growth, according to Fresh Business Thinking. And they apparently are going to, this growth is going to increase every year, um, reaching nearly 22.5 billion by 2017. So as we were talking about yesterday, you know, with streaming services like Spotify and Pandora, um, I think this is really Obviously, everyone can see this is where the music growth is going, but even bringing in the numbers, I mean, 15% is really, really big. So, you know, just um, if you if you're still holding on to your vinyl like I am and thinking this is where it's going to be, I mean, it may not be, guys. Like, go out and support your local record store by all means, but just realize that we are a dying breed. It's all going digital, but embrace it. I mean, there's some album art on there. You know, it doesn't sound as warm, but, you know, global digital music industry. 
It's what we're all about. Um, so Saturday Night Live has announced their musical lineup for this upcoming season. Um, and they have kind of, you know, they've kind of taken, I, I think, in my opinion, things that the internet is really excited about. And now they're putting them on TV. People are finally getting kind of the commentary because they're putting Frank Ocean as their opener. And then they're going to have Mumford and Sons and Muse. If you're not familiar with Frank Ocean, Frank Ocean, basically, um, he's kind of like this rapper. He was kind of, you know, had different mixtapes circling. And um, he kind of basically launched his album and because he was on late night with jimmy fallon it kind of exploded so that's really cool and so they've i guess invited him back on you know nbc just seeing that it worked on you know fallon was like all right let's bring him back but he's really more of an internet sensation i mean channel orange came out and that was kind of pretty much everything the internet was talking about you know for a few hours which is very significant in internet time um but i'm excited about mumford and sons i mean i'm excited about muse they're just i think they're finally kind of getting you know their demographic every now and then snl i mean i want to love it because i love hilarious things but it's slowly waxing and waning you know there's a lot of cast members that are leaving but hopefully at least you know we'll get a few good musical acts before we're all just kind of you know tired of the same jokes over and over again but but more locally in tv uh the show nashville that's on gonna premiere on abc um i think personally i'm excited living in nashville having a show about nashville um I hope that it's not super cheesy. I hope that it's a good, you know, view of the music industry. I mean, I don't know if, how it's going to be, but it does star Connie Britton, which I'm not going to lie to you, world. I love Connie Britton. She was in the show Friday Night Lights. Um, she was also in American Horror Story. She's just fantastic. She played Tammy Taylor in Friday Night Lights, who's one of my icons. Ugh, best. But she's going to play a veteran country star um, on Nashville. And according to The Boot, she's been sharpening her singing skills. I personally think it's really cool when people that are going to be on a TV show or movie, you know, and are going to sing are actually using their own voice. A lot of times they just hire in someone else, you know, so they're just professionally lip syncing. But, you know, I think it's neat even, you know, in the vein that they're trying to get the stars on the show to actually sing. I'm pretty sure um, Hayden Panettiere is also singing. She's like the girl from Heroes. She plays kind of like the little ingenue that's new to the record company. So it looks really good. I think it looks really good. I think we should all watch it together as a community and embrace it. But, you know, watch what you will. Um, but let us know if you like Nashville. Tweet us at, at @talkopolis. Send us an email at info at talkopolis.com. Um, and now a moment of silence for Randy Travis because – Guys, Randy Travis has been all over the map. I don't know if you keep track of Randy Travis. You probably can't because he's just running around in his car and things are happening because he's just trying to break as many laws as he can. He was charged with assault. Um, he had this whole altercation in a church parking lot. I mean, according to Rolling Stone, basically he you know, was in Plano, Texas on Thursday night and he's been ticketed for that. This, you know, there's a there's a mugshot of him and it's just not pretty. I mean, it's the forever and ever amen days are pretty much over. And this is really just my open call to Randy Travis. Randy Travis, if you need someone to hang out with you, if you need a personal driver, I mean, just give me a call. You know, like I, I just want to be your friend because it's just not going well for you lately. And I think we would all like you to come back and, you know, put out some music, maybe just maybe some, you know, little acoustic nights at the Bluebird Cafe. I don't know. But we need to spin this PR because ugh, mm, it's just kind of sad. But, you know, save Randy Travis. We could all contribute. But ugh, it's not looking very pretty. But what is looking pretty in my opinion, at least. I will be honest with you. I am a Texan, and so I come from the Austin area around. Um, it's still festival season. You know, it's in it's in big swing, and the Austin City Limits Festival is pretty big deal. Um, it's gotten bigger every year. But according to the Daily Texan, um, the Austin City Council approved an extension because they have to get permission, you know, for the festival to last. So now, starting next year, not this upcoming festival, ACL will actually be two weekends in the vein of Coachella. Um, so it's going to be even bigger. I don't know if this is going to be a good thing or a bad thing haven't gone to the festival eight times i mean there's good things about music festivals and then there's you know sunday at about three o'clock when you just feel completely dead and you're like it's gross out here it's humid you know my favorite band already played but but i mean two weekends could be better it could you know their ticket sales i know have increased and it would be really neat i don't know if they're gonna do like coachella and book maybe the same bands both weekends or if they're going to book different bands i mean it just it just allows more so you know we'll we'll see i mean it could be really good. It could fail, but you know, we'll, we'll be here for that. And I mean, if, if anyone wants to fly me to Austin to, to test these theories, I'm, I'm perfectly, perfectly fine with that. Um, you know, because, because it's, it, 
it's close to my heart. Also close to my heart. It is festival season. Um, the Americana Music Festival is coming up in Nashville. That'll be the uh, 12th through the 15th of September. So there's a lot of information about that. It's a really cool festival. I highly recommend going to it. Um, there's just going to be a lot of Americana music if you're an Americana nut like me. Um, also coming back, there is a big resurgence recently of a bunch of 90s bands. Um, I'm a child of the 90s, but they're all putting out new albums. So you've got Alanis Morissette launched her album this week. You've got Sixpence None the Richer. You've got No Doubt. You've got Soundgarden. So really just it's the greatest hits of the 90s, basically. They're all coming back and reimagining their albums. I would say that I'm most excited about Sixpence None the Richer just because they'll finally have a different song besides that Kiss Me song that's in every movie ever and every commercial ever. I just feel like I want them to progress past that. Um, so, you know, here's to hoping. Um, and lastly, in my biggest what of the week, I don't even know where to start. According to spin.com, Taylor Swift has decided in her new album, Red, she's going to feature dubstep. If you're not familiar with dubstep, which I feel like you are, but if you're not, if you essentially remember when we had dial up internet and you would connect to the internet and the sound sounded like me that's pretty much dubstep in its essence but you know i'm not gonna judge her on this she wants to put it in it's been successful in a lot of singles you know people kind of sample a little dubstep here and there but you know taylor swift pretty much has the music industry on lock so i feel like whatever she wants to do it's sort of like none of us can stop her she's just gonna go for it so you know dubstep we could expect that in her red album um which i kind of hope everything on it is red like the you know the album is red and the everything just just red it's all red tone I think that would be fun but you know I don't really know but we'll see I mean I usually like to end with something local so Taylor Swift is somewhat local but in addition you know we've got Labor Day weekend coming up this weekend if you are in Nashville there's a bunch of good music to go see there's a bunch of places to hang out I have a few little favorites um Friday there's a cover band called Mayhem and they're performing Madonna's Madonna at the high watt so not her new album but her old album you know featuring greatest hits and featuring great madonna moments i don't know if you're a madonna fan but if you aren't just you know go back in time a little bit and just 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 mellow out on that because she really had it i mean nowadays i don't even know what's going on with her new album i went to grimy's the other day and it was like 40 dollars on vinyl and i just didn't even understand why but you know Friday, Mayhem's performing her older albums, and they say, and I quote, perms and jean jackets are welcomed. So, you know, if that's your crowd, go be seen there. Saturday and Sunday of this weekend is Loretta Lynn's Labor Day Bash, which that sounds exciting to me. Merle Haggard's going to be there. I think anything Loretta did, like does is awesome. I just think she's one of the coolest old ladies in the business. She's continuing to make music. So that's $60, I think, for each day. So if you want to go to that, I'm sure it's going to be great. There's food. It's at her ranch. Very down home and welcome. Um, and then besides that, you know, there's plenty of people playing on Saturday and on Sunday. So feel free to catch some great music. You know, let me know what you're going to go see. Tweet us at Talkopolis. Send us an email, info at Talkopolis.com. And other than that, have a safe and and lovely Labor Day weekend, and I will see you later. I'm Kelsey Manning, and this is Music Business Daily. Microcasting for your city. Talkopolis.